Hey guys, Brad Duct Tape Hale here, and uh, welcome to uh, working on props. Uh, it might be a little shaky, whatnot. I've got it on a new mount, but uh, yeah, uh, kits and cons this week. So I'm uh, painting some props. No, it's not a real gun. Uh, it's a 3D printed. For those who played Resident Evil 2, um, it is the uh, the Lightning Hawk. Hello, that uh, Leon uses. So it's modified and whatnot. Going through, getting a couple layers on it. Got some of the base colors on it. Starting to put some more, um, more of the fill in. Want to get the color solid, you know, stuff like that. And I'm gonna be adding the brown here in a sec. Once this dries. Thank you. Uh, Bahamut Don Creations um, printed it for me. Uh, I've got three or four different uh, friends groups that I uh, get stuff printed through. I, I basically need a 3D printer. I really do. But uh, I don't have one yet. I might try and make that my next big purchase. Honestly. So. Yeah, just sitting here going through and painting it. A lot of layering is what it is. A lot of layering. But it'll look nice once I start to add a little bit of wear and tear to it. Give it a wet wash. You know, a lot of people have been trying to ask me over time that I need to post videos. Uh, it's 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 more than that. This is uh, the print was uh, two hundred bucks. So this this is a this is a custom job. Uh, they don't sell this model online. So yeah, I don't know this painted this would probably go for three hundred plus. So. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more, <clears throat> a little bit more than a hundred bucks. I do. Uh, I was working on my season nine stuff earlier today. Trying to get uh, all the fort bites unlocked. Trying to finish my season stuff. Yeah, we're gonna be working with that. Of course, as I stick my hand in wet paint, yay. I need to get my uh, blow dryer in here to do the, paint the rigging so it actually has a chance to dry. Uh, let's see, let's get some brown paint because we're gonna start doing the handle. What's so, up? Let's get some of this brown paint on here. Well, once all my challenges are done out of the way, I usually like to take a week or two off from Fortnite. So. There we go. It was sealed shut. All right, let's get the brown on this. Yeah, I know. Pretty much, this is pretty much, as one of my friends put it, watching paint dry, which is pretty much what it is. But people have asked, and I will show. Fortnite is fun. I didn't think I would like it when it first came out, but it slowly grew on me. 
It was kind of the popular redheaded stepchild thing, and it was just like, well, I don't know, everyone played it. And it's fun. It grew on me when yeah, when it first came out, it was um I wasn't a fan of it when it first came out because it just I don't know. But they've worked on it. They've changed a lot of stuff, so it's it looks a lot better. I'm thinking of doing more streams like this in the future. More of the bigger prop builds. A lot of people have been wanting that. And I used to do the time-lapse recordings of these. But I just don't have the time to record them much anymore. I don't know. Alright, sweet. That side's mostly dry. Which means... different layers of color on this brown wise give it a nice wood look I almost double dipped the color there we go Something relaxing, something calm about this. Oh yeah. Um, painting wise, how long I've been working on this? Uh, I started on this last night, so there's about an hour or two's worth of painting on here, so not too much. Uh, yeah, no, it turned out really well. Uh, a lot of people don't, um, for a lot of custom stuff to be done, um, a lot of the Resident Evil 2 weapons don't technically have a model file. Um, but, uh, this one was custom done. It's based off of a regular Desert Eagle model, so as you can see in the front, but the game went and gave it a custom barrel. So, uh, they only made one airsoft run of it, which was like maybe a thousand pieces. So, um, this was much cheaper to get than that. So we contacted Bahamut Don and they went and did uh, a custom print of this. And, uh, Bahamut Don is the only one apparently I know online that actually has a 3D print, uh, file for this. So if anyone plays Resident Evil is looking for props and whatnot for cosplay, uh, Bahamut Don, um will gladly print this up. I don't know what their current price is for it. I know what they quoted us, and I'm not going to repeat that. Because I don't know if he's upped it or lowered it. So I don't want to misquote anything. Um, this is one that I am definitely going to try. Huh, I try. Um, I'm going to be trying to show this to Nick, the voice actor and body double for Leon Kennedy. Uh, through my friends in Residence of Evil. Go check their channel out. Um, Nick, who, I mean, like I said, literally is the voice in the body, is working on his own uh, Leon Kennedy cosplay. And he was needing props. So um, my friend Tony uh, outsourced me to him because he knows that um, we've recently done all the research for it. And uh, I got to help him make or uh, source out his uh, stuff to make his cosplay. So what he didn't make by hand, I helped him find what he needed for it. So uh, I'm very interested to see how that cosplay is going to turn out. 
Uh, I think that's really kind of cool. Also, they did our thing on Residents of Evil, where they had Nick actually play Resident Evil for the first time. And that was really fun to watch. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So. Yeah, when you get down to, like, the really, like, nitty-gritty, like, tiny parts, it's always kind of a pain in the butt to get it just right. Yeah, I think the next set of props I'm going to be painting after this are uh, some of the Fortnite Nerf guns that just came on out. Maddie and I are working on a couple Fortnite cosplays for uh, Matt Surrey. And then I'm going to be working on some uh, Fallout props. So I'm going to be make, making some Fallout armor. Nothing fancy, just a couple of things of like plate armor. I have half my Fallout outfit done. It's just I need a few aesthetic things for it. That's looking good so far. people can see on the, the handle so it's starting to as compared to the other side and it often helps too if you're trying to do like smaller details to make sure your prop is very steady and I can always go back and uh, detail in the black that's that's nothing um, just make sure you don't get it onto the chrome, because chrome is a little bit harder to uh, do touch up on. Because I use a uh, furniture paint chrome on this, so I've got a spray box that I spray in, so I don't get anything on there and whatnot. And when you live in Chicago, that's really the only way you can do it. You just can't go out in your driveway and spray paint it, which because we don't have a driveway. But, uh, all right. Yeah, our friend Megan, who does uh, all the paintings for Game Grumps, is, uh, is always complaining of the fact she has such a small window to do a lot of those the paintings. She does a like, really cool like a silhouette style uh, painting, but she does it all stenciled out and does it with spray paint. So it has to be a certain uh, weather and whatnot to do it. So yeah, there we go. It's looking a lot better. Some more of the browns filled in on there. Yeah, and it's, what's, what's interesting is that with the newer model, the old model from the original Resident Evil game, when they put the 10-inch extension barrel, it was full chrome. This one, it's a black receiver on top and it's the regular handle underneath. So it's the, it's the normal handle. Oh. Yeah, it's the only thing about 3D prints because if you do like airsoft, you can take some of these pieces apart and then just paint those pieces and snap them back on. Uh, 3D print, not so much. There's a few things I'm gonna have to talk to Bahamut about. Maybe raising a bit more detail on a few things, but this is not bad at all for what they did. They did a really good job. Really, really good job. I'm gonna get a bit more cherry wood look feel to this. And we'll fix that boo boo. There we go. Okay, so the don't tell me I just all right and I just smeared some paint on here it's all right all 
Really hope I have some Q-tips to fix this. Well, it's just a spot I'm gonna have to touch up. It's all right. There's always that going back and fixing stuff. Slow, easy strokes. Controlled, real simple. That way you don't have to worry about messing up or whatnot. And I mean, it might look like this is almost all painted. This is just base coats. Um, these will be the base coats and then we're gonna go in with the detail paint then we're gonna go in with weathering and we're gonna throw a couple layers of sealant in between to fill it out so it's got more of a smooth metal look. Um, so yeah, this is gonna look really good. Um, I mean, it'll be done in a day or two. So I'll probably be streaming some more of this um, tomorrow night. And then we'll uh, rough it up a little bit, make it look a little beat up. And then uh, just go from there. Take a little sandpaper, kind of give it that little rough scrape look and feel. Yeah, the chrome's kind of coming off of my hand a little bit, which is good because it'll help with uh, Kind of giving it a dirty look because you don't want it to look brand new or shiny. You want it to look like it's it's been used a little bit. You want it to look like it's uh, it's fired a couple rounds at least. Now with three D print weapons, I know a lot of cosplayers are all like in this day and age with the conventions and whatnot. You gotta be really careful about how your weapons are marked. So for photos, for a lot of 3D print stuff, technically by law, you don't have to orange tip your 3D print weapons because they're obviously fake. Does not mean that you shouldn't orange tip your weapons. So what I do for 3D print weapons if I want to do photos is that when we go airsoft, um, some states don't require orange tip and some states do. So it means that not all airsoft guns come with an orange tip. So you just get a roll of like orange field tape and you put it on the barrel. Um, I mean, obviously all you gotta do is go and clank this on the counter and most security cons will know it's not real. Okay, so the brown's almost done actually. The base coat is at least. Some of the weird positions I get my hand in doing this, it's just... Alright. Alright, so that's technically what it should look like. Um, finished, air quotes. That's before we go in and uh, detail it or put any like grime or gruck or like oil or lubricant on it, uh, scruffing it up or anything like that. Like the top still looks a little rough, you can see. So I'm gonna put like a filler in here and then repaint over that and sand it a little bit. But it does help to layer out the base coats Yep, and uh, the magazine's drying in the other room, but I mean, so far so good. It'll definitely be ready for Kitsune Con. But yeah, uh, that's a little bit of painting work on this. I just wanted to trial and run and see if anyone actually wanted to take part and watch me paint or work on props or anything like that. But uh, if you guys like what you see, drop a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want more of this on the channel, definitely drop comments on here about more prop work or more prop painting. We'll definitely do that. And remember, like always, if I can carefully set this down, be like duct tape. Stick to it. Bye-bye.